Greetings all. I'm joined today by Vaid Sitaran, who is currently directing his first feature length film, a documentary called Man Down, A Closer Look at Family Court. It's nice to have you here, Vaid. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. So let's talk about this movie. Can I ask, uh, what inspired you to pursue this question of whether family courts discriminate against fathers? Well, uh, <clears throat> I could tell you, it happened a few years ago. I was doing a course at Langara College in Vancouver, Canada, where, um, where I currently live. And um, as this was about, about, about four years ago, and part of the, we had a graduate course, a, a graduate um, film to do. And I was browsing topics, and I stumbled upon this um, a men's rights website. I don't know how for the life of me, I have no idea how. <clears throat> and um, the first thing that went through my mind, I, I told this, I've told this silly joke about a uh, hundred times. I said, um, men's rights? I never heard of it. What, what do they want? More time during the day to download porn? I, I don't get it. <laughs> and um, then I started reading, and uh, their main grievance was what happens to men in, in family court. And instantly, mm -hmm. I I started having these flashbacks of what happened, certain thoughts I had growing up when I was in, let's say, my teens. I heard there were some older cousins of mine who went through tough, tough divorces. And, uh, you know, it's kind of thing a lot of men talk about as they get older in their 20s <clears throat> and 30s. And now I'm I'm 45 years old, and now I have a few friends who, who've been through it. And they've... Uh, and they've all told me that they they think that uh, generally speaking, not 100 percent of the time, but generally speaking, they they think that men don't get a, a fair shake, especially fathers. And so I instantly gravitated towards the 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 topic. So I thought, okay, this is um, this is I, I thought it was fascinating. And the more I read about it, things like um, paternity fraud, um, <clears throat> I mean. Um, restraining parental orders. Parental alienation. Yes, parental alienation. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was a big one. Big one. Never never knew what that was. And the, the more I, the more I dug and dug, I was fascinated not just by by topics like that, especially um, something like like paternity fraud. That one to this day has me pretty pretty shocked that you could you know there there are these instances where men can prove with DNA that they're not the, the father of, of, a, of a child and they still have to pay child support and that's mm -hmm. how, how is that possible. So <clears throat> that's what made me gravitate towards the, uh, the, the topic and that's how I just got um, things started to, to snowball. Right, so what, what are your aims in making the film? I would say the main aim I have is to maybe portray to people that Pain is pain, regardless of whether or not it's uh, it's a man or a woman or a mother or father. If people recognize that the pain of, of any parent um, is obviously, how can I say? As I can say, it is. If people recognize that a father's pain is the same as a mother's pain, having not uh, having less time, uh, a father, any mother, or father going from seeing their kids seven days a week to maybe six eight days a month <clears throat> if that pain is real then you can recognize that solutions are are necessary mm. um, if you recognize that compassion is is step one if you could you mm. can have equal compassion for for anyone then a solution is a lot more solutions a lot more viable and a lot of people i don't think they talk about solutions um, mm -hmm. yeah, I was th I was thinking that 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 is is aim to to show what a lot of not I I, I haven't decided yet whether it's going to be predominantly um, <clears throat> predominantly men because if I hear some uh, I meet some women who go gone who have gone through some terrible times in uh, in divorce I'm de definitely interested in, in in talking to them but I do think that the mainstream media they don't talk that much about what many men go through so I would like to. Mm -hmm. To, to have a film that talks a lot about what, what men go through. So I would say that that's my aim, to, 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 show, to show their pain and, um, and to talk about, talk about solutions. Because like I said, without, without more, more compassion, if people recognize that they, they deserve more compassion, you're more motivated to find a solution. 
Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about um, some of the contributors you've already got participating in the film? Right now it's uh, it's me and me. I have my, my own savings. But, uh, well, I mean, I mean, um, in terms of the people you're interviewing. So I oh. noticed you've got clips um, with Karen Strawn. Yes, as uh, part Karen. of it. Yes, which Karen. I know all of our viewers today will be very excited to hear. Well, yes, Karen Strawn is one. Um, there is, uh, well, his name escapes me now. In in California. Um, well, anyway, uh, Mark Mark Angelucci. I don't know if you've uh, you've you've heard of, heard of him. A, a lawyer who met. He was inspired by Warren Farrell's book, and his. He, I interviewed him also in in California. Oh, Harry Crouch. That's his name in, in California. Oh, he, of course, so, yeah. So, so interviewed Harry Crouch. Um, oh, who's the other people? Oh, geez, the name escapes me now. You oh. have. You have, you've got, I know um, at the moment you're looking for people to share their personal stories from family courts. Have you got any of those in at the moment or are you just I've, looking? I've, I've done about, I would say about 30, 31 interviews. Wow. It's got me about, maybe about 38, 39 hours of, of, of footage. And um, and as, as you might think, well, okay, with 39 hours of footage, you, could, you should make a two hour movie. It doesn't necessarily work that way. <laughs> So if you have one hour of raw footage, it might be whittled down to one minute of screen time when it's, it's edited uh -huh. down. Yeah. So yes, uh, if I, I do have quite a few, um, quite a few men who I have spoken to. Um, one, some uh, great footage I have is out of outside of a protest in Pomona, California, it happened one or two years ago. I think it was a year and a half ago. Um, so yes. I do have a few. I have spoken to some some men already, lawyers and uh, one psychiatrist. Right. Yeah. I wonder if you're looking for any children who believe they've been arbitrarily separated from their fathers in family courts as well. Absolutely. The problem with um, with children is, of course, they need the permission um, of both parents. Oh yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> well, you know, because, potentially because people, adult children who yes, think exactly. that. Yeah. yeah. Children, <laughs> who wants yeah. Um, there's one person I, I do know, um, like a, a family friend. I think she, she said she went through a tough time during her parents' divorce, but she's, she's an adult now. So, yes, um, she, she's willing to, to come forward. But, you know, it's, um, I found that those people I have spoken to who are adults now and they are children of divorce, they tend to be tight-lipped. They, they don't know if they want to come out now and say something because yeah. it could be... Um, they, they think they, they might hurt one of the parents, and they might, mm -hmm. they might come off as if they're, they're taking sides. Uh huh. Understandable. But, yes, but uh, I would definitely would love to talk to, to some of them if um, I can. I wonder if you've seen or if you're planning to see the insides of any family courts during the project. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, I have. I only sat in. I sat in on one family court uh, process, and it was in in Vancouver. They're fairly easy. You go on the. I went in the lobby and just looked at the kind of uh, the list of cases, and they they fairly. You did not list it as, you know, this one's a divorce, this one's this, this one's that. But I just looked at the, um, the two same two last names. So if you saw, you know, like uh, John, Johnson versus Johnson, I said, okay, maybe that's that's a, that's a divorce. So I, I sat in on one, and I have to say, I don't know why some of these, some of them are are public. You can you you can sit mm -hmm. in. Some yeah. are closed. Uh, I was kicked out of, out of one because um, it, it, I didn't, I wasn't aware it, it was closed, but they told me, I'm sorry, this is it's closed. But the one I was allowed to, to sit in, I have to say it was, I, I'm not too sure it, it should be open to the public because there, the, there was a father on, he was on the stand on the day I went and within, like they picked up from where they, they left off maybe the previous day or the previous week and he started talking about, um, yes, uh, going through this, this ordeal, yes, I attempted suicide. And and he and the second he said that my, my, my head went down. I'm saying this is this is really personal stuff. Should is it people, people yeah. are allowed to be allowed? To see well, this? yeah, but on the other hand, it's um, you know we have this open legal system so that people can keep an eye and make sure that justice is being served. Yeah. And so, although yeah, it is very difficult, you know, either to 
tell all the, of this personal information although I suspect that being in front of like the judge is probably more um difficult than being in front of some members of the public or the press right you know and actually you know from my perspective I, I imagine in the US and Canada it's similar to the UK where our family courts are open so you can go and look but there are huge restrictions on what you can publish right. about what goes on and I actually think maybe we need to lift some of those restrictions so that people can talk about what goes on in them right yeah and it's a and, and don't get me wrong it's it's a good thing because if if this is this is obviously very very real it's um it, it makes it more accessible to to, to people they, they can know what's, what's going on as opposed to being kept hidden what um but to be I have heard, maybe you might know more about this, in, in the UK, I have heard there are a lot of people, I don't know if maybe men or women, they, during divorces, they have what you might call in the States, uh, gag orders put mm -hmm. on them, and they yeah. can't talk about Injunctions, yeah. So is, 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 that, is that true? Oh, yes, that's absolutely true. Um, and, oh. you know, um, I we had... I've got a friend called John Waters, um, who I first saw speaking at a debate called Is Masculinity Toxic for Boys in 2016? And he was talking about how he had, you know, a terrible experience in family court and he experienced the discrimination against men that went on. And, you know, he said that if he was to talk about it publicly, then he would be sent to prison. And he said that, like, <clears throat> one of his hopes in life is that at some point he's diagnosed with a terminal illness so that he can just write it all down, all of his experiences, and publish it and tell them to come and lock him up because he's going to die anyway. So, yes, mm. very much, very much true. Is that not the case where you are? Um, I, I've never heard of, uh, of an instance where... A Canadian man, he had a, a gag order put on him where he can he, he can't talk about it. Maybe it, it does. Maybe it does happen. Mm -hmm. I was very shocked when I I heard in that in the UK it, it is it is done. I mean, I I think as far as I know, it it isn't done in in Canada, um, but I'm sure that a judge can can punish someone if let's say is in during an ongoing divorce, someone speaks disparagingly about about the judge. It's quite possible. Yeah, it's yeah, actually, yeah, I'm sure. That guy's in trouble. Yeah. Um, but yeah, gag orders put on men in Canada, I haven't heard of it. Right. So, although Man Down is your first, it's your directing debut, um, mm -hmm. you've been in the film industry for a while as a distributor, and Michael Bruno is an established cin cinematographer. Sorry. Um, and I wonder whether you two have any sense of whether this project in particular has any specific challenges related to the subject matter or is it just the kind of normal everyday challenges that every project faces? Um, what challenges would we face? I would say, to my knowledge, I, I would say normal everyday challenges almost um, almost any project faces. Uh, the biggest thing with, the big thing with documentaries is, is that it, the advantage is that it might be cheaper to make a documentary, but it's not like if you're making a, a, a normal fiction film, you can hire actors. But with documentaries, you have to get people to come forward and talk. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't willing to come forward and talk, you don't have much of a, much of a film. But uh, luckily, because this, many people in many different countries have been, let's just say, influenced and touched by the the family court system. There are a lot of people who are willing to willing to talk. So for a topic like this, that's um, that's a, that's a big help. Right. And so finally, can you tell us anything that you've discovered about family court so far, or is that too much of a spoiler? Oh. Um. Have I discovered about family court so far? I would say. It maybe it didn't surprise me, but same, let me put it this way. The law specifically states, and once and this is in Canada, I believe the states as well, wouldn't surprise me in, in the UK, that matters are done 
in quote unquote the best interest of the child. Mm. That is what is it. Yes, yes, like that's, that's true. Not, Apparently it's true. It's the best interest of the child. But if it's the best interest of the child, what I'm surprised about in family courts is the argument against, and I think it's a fair argument, against there being any bias against men in family court is often, well, the reason why the kids usually go with the mom is, is mom usually spends more time with the kids. She handles a lot of things at home. But here in Canada, I have spoken to, to one person. Um, I interviewed her already, uh, Heidi Neighbourhood. One of her clips is on my, my channel now. Um, and she said she, she does counsel men. And she says, well, uh, there's some men who I have uh, who I've spoken to, and they are the primary caregivers, care, 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 caregivers of the child. And um, when they go through a divorce, mom still gets sole custody, and the kids are, are in daycare. And wow. she, I remember her telling me, what, what, what sense does that make? So I said, okay, I'm, I'm now I'm getting the feeling best interest of the child is what I call truck language. You know, you could drive a truck through that language because it, it allows maybe judges the space to to use their own discretion, as many judges do. But it allows it allows judges to simply say, well, it's messages of the child is what I feel. Uh, as I tell exactly. People, well, that that's also the um, reason that's given for the restrictions on um, information getting out from family courts as well you know for keeping that kind of level of secrecy around them is that it would be damaging for children if any of this got out but you know that it's it could be true but if there is an ideological bias and a discrimination going on against fathers and if actually what we're looking at is a system that works in the best interests of the mother very often, which I think is arguable, arguably true, um, then we do need for them to be more open. Yes, uh, definitely. And I definitely hope that, I have to say it was very, given all the factors in, in family court and what I've, I have come across, it was quite heartwarming for me to find that the men I've spoken to um, the, the the women as well I see on on blogs on um, what people write I see on Facebook groups um, mothers complaining against the system fathers complaining about the system the lawyers I've spoken to they all agree on one thing and that is the children go through go through the worst uh, the, the children are, are the hardest hit mm -hmm. so it, it's good that if if everyone can agree on one thing I think solutions are quite uh, are, are quite doable um, of course what is where the trick comes in is if people already believe they have certain preconceived notions. They believe that mm. that uh, mom is what's necessary. She 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 is what's uh, she's who is necessary to to raise the kids. But dad, he's not as necessary. The second you mm -hmm. might believe that that he is less than that is going that can influence your your decisions. And from mm. what I haven't read the studies from you know, from from start to finish, but. Uh, it has been uh, reported that when fathers are involved in in raising the raising the families and in in the family, often for for girls, um, teenage pregnancies are usually lower. Mm -hmm. Boys, mm -hmm. it's a smaller chance of you getting involved in in gangs. You know, mm -hmm. lower shin rates, uh, that that kind of thing. I think if, if judges if judges knew that that limiting any parent. I'm sure they could be devastating effects for for moms. Good moms, a lot of great moms out there having um, uh, equal time with, with with their kids or something close to equal time. Uh, I think if any judge knew that limiting any parent's time with their kids could be devastating to the kids' lives, they they would think long and hard about about separating, uh, of, you know, letting any parent have seven, uh, six to eight days a month with their, with, uh, with, with their kids. Mm. Well, yeah, I would hope so, although it would amaze me if the judges didn't know this because, you know, the, the information, the data, the studies are out there. You know, I tend to think that there is an, a real ideological barrier to some judges, um, you know, although they might know that fathers are necessary, um, you know, and that the vast majority of children will do better if their fathers are in their lives in a meaningful way. 
they might know that consciously, but when they're faced with a personal kind of scenario, their ideological prejudices get in the way. Um, and, you know, the other kind of problem is the false allegations problem, which I'm sure you cover in your movie. Um, uh, some men certainly have said that, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's going on in the UK at the moment is that in 20, was it 2012 or 2015? I think it was 2012. Um, the rules for legal aid actually changed. So that's financial assistance for people to pay right. for solicitors in family courts. Um, and so you could only um, apply for legal aid if you alleged domestic violence. So uh -huh. the allegations of domestic violence have shot through the roof. And not only that, but the um, balance between like men and women alleging it has changed. So it used to be like, I think it was about 40% of domestic violence allegations were by men against women and 60% were by women against men. And now it's like a vast majority of allegations are coming from women, you know, which is, it's obviously, you know, and if you look at the domestic violence um, statistics of, you know, they are, if they, the government ones in the UK say that men are 40% of victims. And so, you know, the old kind of, um, ratio looked to be about right, but now something is obviously wrong because it's just not reflective right. of what we know is really happening. Well, okay. thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I know that you've been really busy um, and I would like to encourage everybody to keep an eye on mandandthedocumentary.com website i'll put the link in the description and also the link to your youtube channel what's that called again um you can just search for man down of course and look at family mm -hmm. court on uh -huh. facebook uh, yeah yeah. yeah we'll put all the links in the description facebook pages yep. and everything um and i'd like to just repeat if you are a citizen of the us or canada and you do have stories to share then there is a contact page on the website, isn't there? Yes, there is. And, yeah. um, and uh, please subscribe to our newsletter. And it's not like we're, we're, we're not, interested, um, not like we're not interested in people in the UK and, and, and other countries. But oh, uh, right. we, of course, if we, we raise enough okay. money, we're, we're probably willing to go, um, to go in anywhere. Oh, fantastic. Good to hear. Well, best of luck with the project. I very much look forward yeah, to thanks. seeing it when it's released. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for coming on. Goodbye. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care. And you. Bye-bye.